Good heavens! If everybody were like you, a love story would soon be over. Matrimony ought never to happen until after other adventures. A lover, to be agreeable, must understand how to utter fine sentiments, to breathe soft, tender and passionate vows. His courtship must be according to the rules. In the first place, he should view the fair one of whom he becomes enamoured at some place of worship, or while out walking, or at some public ceremony, or else he should be introduced to her by a relative or friend, as if by chance. <laughs> when he leaves her, he should appear in a pensive and melancholy mood. For some time, he should conceal his passion from the object of his love, but pay her several visits, at every one of which he should introduce some gallant subject to exercise the wits of all the company. When the day comes for him to make his declarations, which generally should be contrived in some shady garden walk while the company is at a distance, it should be quickly followed by anger, which is shown by our blushing, which for a while banishes the lover from our presence. <gasps> <laughs> he finds afterwards means to pacify us, to accustom us gradually to his declarations, and to draw from us that confession which causes us so much pain. After that comes the adventures, the rivals who thwart mutual inclination, the persecutions of fathers, the jealousies that arise without any foundations, complaints, despairs, running away with, and its consequences. <laughs> Thus things are done in a fashionable life, and veritable gallantry cannot dispense with these forms. But to come out point blank with a proposal of marriage, to make no love but with a marriage contract, and to begin the novel at the wrong end. <laughs> Once more, father, nothing can be more tradesmanlike, and the mere thought of it makes me sick at heart. <laughs>